The biggest plume of Saharan dust this season has entered the Caribbean, and it's on the way to parts of the United States. What's going on, guys? I'm certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegis. In this video, we are going to track where that plume of dust is right now and then show you when it gets to the Western Caribbean and then eventually the Southern and Southeast United States. We're also going to break down the tropics, of course. There's one area still in the Atlantic that we're going to talk about its development chances and then look kind of long range over the next 7 to 10 days to see if there's anything out there developing. Then I want to kind of put a bow on this video closer to the end and talk about where we stand. We're way above average in terms of the number of name storms to date and then the energy that those storms have produced. So we are going to break all of that down in this video. Hey, before we get into it, if you want to stay updated on all things weather, of course, this is hurricane season. You have to hit subscribe. Please do that. And if you find this video helpful, please hit that thumbs up button. It really does help us out a lot. Also, welcome to all of the new subscribers. Appreciate the support. Here is the current footprint of the Saharan dust, of course, originating from the Sahara Desert. This is typical for this time of the year to have these rounds or these plumes of dust kind of ejecting out of the desert and then making its transatlantic flight, if you will, across the Atlantic Ocean. So there we go. We have a lot of dust towards the Lesser Antilles into the Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico. We're starting to see some of that dust after a rainy day on the 29th of June, still dust free towards Jamaica and the Cayman Islands into Cuba, the Yucatan. None of that dust yet being picked up towards the Gulf Coast of the U.S. into the southeast corner of the United States as well. That will change this time around, though. Here we go with the dust forecast again a little bit later on on June 30th and into the 4th of July. You see that dust kind of pinwheeling around the big area of high pressure. Look at all the white and brown on your screen. So the dust as we get in towards July 3rd, that's 9 o'clock, see it toward Puerto Rico into the Dominican Republic, Haiti, Cuba, maybe getting into the Florida Keys by this time, certainly into the Yucatan Peninsula. Watch what happens though as we get through the first full week of July. We see some of that pinwheeling up towards San Antonio, toward Houston, New Orleans, and then into parts of extreme South Florida that includes Miami, Fort Lauderdale. And then as we continue through that first week of July, we will see the opportunity for a lot of Florida to be kind of engulfed in that dust. Same deal continuing along the North Gulf Coast. You see those green arrows on your screen. That is going to be the flow around high pressure that's kind of hanging out over Bermuda. That's our Bermuda High. It's going to round that base of that area of high pressure and then just kind of work its way into the United States. Now, it's not all bad. It's not all good. Of course, there's that catch-22. This will help to enhance sunrises and sunsets by adding some of that particle, particulate matter about 15 to 20,000 feet, give or take, above your head. There are studies that show this also helps into promoting red tide. Of course, all of the phosphates and all of the nitrogen in there really helps to energize the seaweed and some of those other things that are in the ocean so there's good to it there's bad to it. it also helps the amazon rainforest it helps the fertilizer it's that natural fertilizer but when you get too much in the ocean that's when you start to have problems again with red tide with the overrunning of some of that seaweed that can be really nasty on to the tropical update and again if you are following and looking for other things in this video i have the chapters listed in the description you can take a look at that post in the comments also where you're tuning in from if you're still with me all right 10 percent shot over the next 10 days and seven days for this little entity there is bermuda the island of bermuda you see some thunderstorms to the east of where x marks the spot there so this thing is not very well organized development tangents continue to drop with this entity what was cindy is now impacting parts of nova scotia again it's not highlighted any longer it's still ripped apart you can see that by the wind shear how do we have thunderstorms here some of the clouds and the lighter white kind of being stretched across the North Atlantic there, but there's thunderstorm activity associated with this other disturbance. And that was the reason for all of the heavy rain toward Puerto Rico, toward the Virgin Islands yesterday as it kind of pulled in a ton of Pacific moisture. Really nothing to write home about that one. Now, just outside of the Caribbean, we do have another tropical wave. You see the thunderstorms here. So Trinidad and Tobago over the next couple of days, July 1st, July 2nd, we're going to be under the gun for more thunderstorm chances, especially also in northern South America. As that tropical wave rolls through, we are likely not going to see any kind of tropical development, though, with that system. It's just going to bring some heavy rain, a few gusty thunderstorms. We could use the rain in parts of the Windward Islands, so that may be beneficial. A couple of extra tropical waves coming off of Africa. The good news is that none of these are expected to develop. We now have a nice chunk of Saharan dust riding again just to its north. That is one of the reasons why that we have 
all of this clear sky from the Leeward Islands back to the Cabo Verde Islands because we have the dust in this area. Notice just outside of its influence, if you will, we have those thunderstorms rolling across. So the dust really does do a number in helping to limit activity this time of the year. More on that in just a second. I'll show you where we stand and why we're a little bit above average in that department, in the tropical department anyway, and coming up. All right, so the European model over the next couple of days here, it does try to develop that little thing for us. You see that closed isobar there? It tries to get something going over the next couple of days. Regardless if it does develop, impacts are going to be the same to parts of Nova Scotia and the Canadian Maritimes. It's going to add an increased moisture, which again is going to be a good thing. We have crazy fires burning on the southern part of Nova Scotia, so that will certainly help things out a little bit as well. And then nothing again towards the deep tropics or towards the uh, subtropics, I should say. And there's no indication either that we are going to get the subtropics rolling in the short term. So I think good news all around over the next 7-ish, 10-ish days in the tropics, and you can thank the Saharan dust for that. It was a characteristically low for the first month of hurricane season. Typically, we get these dust plumes, prolifically anyway, through May and through June. We didn't really have that this year, and that did allow for Brett and Cindy to develop again in those really odd places right in the development region, right in the central Atlantic in that main development region. So we did get two tropical storms in June. Of course, we had Arlene as well, but Arlene did not form in the deep tropics. That was kind of that hybrid system or that non-tropical entity that changed that transitioned into the tropical energy in terms of ace what we call this it's a metric that we use to determine how intense a storm is overall and how intense a hurricane season is it stands for accumulated cyclone energy and once these things become named once they become tropical storms they start to generate ace so basically, it's something that the more intense the storm is and the longer the storm lasts, the more accumulated cyclone energy it's going to, to generate. Between Arlene, Brett, and Cindy, we now have an ace of 9.8 to date through June 30th. The average to date is only 2.4. Again, it's typically a quiet period, but as you may imagine, that we would be able to generate an ace like that because we've had three named storms already before July 1st. And again, you can thank the lack of dust in the main development region, I think, for getting that early jump, at least where we had Brett and Cindy, because only a handful of storms developed there since the late 1800s, and we had two develop there just this year in 2023. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Again, if you found this content helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Welcome again to all of the new subscribers. And again, if you found this content helpful, please subscribe if you hit that notification bell. If you're watching on YouTube, you will be notified anytime we post new content. Thanks so much, guys, for tuning in. We'll catch you next time.